came across this beauty at the uh, ham swap meet yesterday and I couldn't resist and of course I instantly started thinking about fun ways to put this thing out of its misery and as usual we have the typical Crosley quality precision tone arm and the little hook thing here is broken off and it does uh, 33, 45, and 78 and I love how they put these crappy plastic corners on here to make it look like it's uh, you know ready to ready to roll out on the gig it's roadworthy roadworthy uh, flight case CR 49 TA really yeah this is the interesting thing about it DC it runs on 12 volts that's what uh, but um, I don't know what math this is but 12 volts at a half an amp is not 15 watts so maybe somebody can do the ohm's law on that and calculate that out for us but uh, 15 watts at 12 volts would be about an amp wouldn't that be right something like that so obviously the QC has not passed and it's in pretty good shape and like I say, the interesting thing about it is, is that it's fully contained. It's got a, uh, like a two by three speaker here and one over here. And it's 12 volts. And it comes with a cigarette lighter plug on the end. Of course, it looks like the molded one might have failed so the owner put this aftermarket one on there we have it hooked up to a little 12 volt gel cell here it's got a tone control and a volume on off and the stylus feels like it's in okay condition what's uh get a disposable record and give it a shot. Let's first start off with a cut here from Ray Parker Jr.'s Greatest Hits called For Those Who Like to Groove. And some of you might remember a video I did where I had one of these Crosley uh, record players with that song playing burning and smoking and arcing. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Hope I don't ruin my record. McCrosley. Not bad. Uh, that's the volume all the way up, and that's all we're getting out of it. That's pretty disappointing. I think my 100 milliwatt AM transistor radio goes louder. I mean, that's that's actually really disappointing. <laughs> So check out 
this engineering right here, when you're at the end of the record, this thing won't pick it up. Let's see, Sister Sledge, we are family, the eight minute version. Stupid um, tone arm is so heavy. Check out that, check out that precision, that precision mechanism there for a gentle, gentle record treatment. Pitiful. One particular thing that is nothing whatsoever in any way, shape, or form like any. Okay, this this is horrible. So, what market would this record player be for? What would you need a suitcase size 12 volt Chinese record player for? Um, I think what we need to do is we need to road test this thing. We need to get it in the car and take it on a ride and see how it performs um, mobile. Um, that was, man, I was, is it still on? Yeah, I'm rolling. Do we have a working cigarette lighter in here? Well, it's intermittent, so gonna cut on and off. Okay. I think it's probably better if I hop in the back seat. Alright. I know it's pitiful, but what can you do? No, the, uh, the, the selection of content. Oh. Well, I was, I was trying, no, not at all. <laughs> I, I was trying to deal with the copyright thing. Well, it kind of works. Move it around. There you go. That's the problem. But so, at an angle, it's not going to be. Whoa. So we have. Need any help from me? Oh. We have uh, the John Birch Society. What is the John Birch Society? We could start off with that. Here, open this one. Squeeze in here. I'll we'll give this thing a road test. It's not that bad, actually. My name is Rex Westerfield, Western Director of Public Relations for the John Birch Society. The story you're going to hear is about an organization that may be familiar to you already. The story will be told by a gentleman whose background is probably the least known of any national figure in America today. The gentleman you will hear shortly was born on a farm in North Carolina and has an ancestry full of farmers and Baptist preachers. Spence, by the time he was seven years old, he had read the nine-volume world. He read the deeper his understanding became of the civilizations of the post. Once one of his principal, and well known as a mass media, the speaker's platform, some educational institutions, and it, unfortunately, many very well do this. But we'll give you that we have lived up to hesitation. Members of the society are of all races, colors, and creeds. We are of all social, economic, and educational levels. We are individualists who disagree among ourselves about many things, but we are firmly united in devotion to those beliefs, principles, and purpose, for we have voluntarily to combat more effectively the evil forces which now threaten our freedom, our lives, our country, and our civilization. Two, to prevail upon our fellow citizens to start pulling out of the deepening morass of Light green. And then climb up the mountain individual than man has reached for the weapon that they supply on the side of the body. 
by joining the chorus of attack on the John Birch Society. Very few of them indeed have ever realized the extent to which they were running interference for the communists. A related part of the Mountain And now you may well ask, what have we accomplished? Well, first, we have established a nationwide educational army. It has a fully paid field staff. This army has very books and reprints of the publishers. And our members now operate some 350 reading rooms that sell books scattered throughout the country, most of them under the name of American Opinion Libraries. We have certainly helped to reawaken the basic to families, not destroy all three of the organization. That is, without constant resistance, in any place or at any time where there is loyalty to anything except the communist state. We were the first organization in the United States to start calling widespread attention to the worldwide communist plot to discredit citizens everywhere. We have been successful in bogging down this very strategic part of the whole country. More recently, we have been emphasizing in a national government. All right, let's uh, let's get that other radio. I mean, that other. Hey, what do we have here? Addition and subtraction by Walt Disney. Okay, let's try this one. Let's try right turns this time. Let's see if it does any better. Once upon a time there were ten little cannibals swinging on a vine. One tried to pat a big wildcat. And then there were nine. Ha! Gosh, trying to pat a wildcat. One of the nine drank two. There were eight. Trapped in cannibals in a hurry. Dive. Now five, we see. One went to Singapore. Then there were only four. One turned green. Then there were three. One fell into some blue. Then there were only two. They drank from a loving cup. Wildcat. Ate himself all. One fell into some blue. Then there were only two. They drank from a loving cup. One became a skeleton. That's fine. The boys have been fixed in trains. They've all wear two from six. They're all five. Take four away from nine. Take two from eight. That's fine. The wow and flutter is pretty cool, isn't it? On a glory tree Oh look There's another Now There's three There's one more And that makes four one. Yeah, Here's yeah. one hearts <laughs> Now take five And add a one Don't be slow Be quick 
At three and three, now four and two, the answer to the spoon. It isn't such a very sticky chore. For instance, two and two are the same as one and three. They both add up to four. Everybody knows that. Knowing two and three must put that up to something. And what answer will you now arrive? I got the window down. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.